guys, what's up? It's Pastor Jonathan, and I just wanted to bring you a real short encouragement this week through video since we're not meeting in person. The holidays are incredible, and I love them, but instead of incredibly awesome, they can also just be incredibly busy. In fact, if I were to be honest, I'm still kind of tired. But anyways, they can become so busy, in fact, that we sort of breathe a sigh of relief when they're over, and now we're looking forward to 2023. But if we're not careful, we might have allowed all the stuff going on to get in between us and our relationship with God. But my prayer is that all of us truly evaluate where we're at currently right now. I know you hate to hear it, but school is back in session next week. That's your mission field. So I challenge you over the next few days to truly evaluate where you're at and go into the second half of the school year more on fire than when you entered the first half of it. Spend time recharging that battery that only God can charge. I'm talking to myself in this as well, ironic as I'm on vacation recording this video. I know. But right after this, I'm resting, gonna go eat some good food, don't worry. For this next year to be incredible though, you need to make sure to get alone with God and pray. Ask him for opportunities to tell others about him. Ask him to give you the wisdom and courage to do things the right way. Ask him to lead you into a relationship with him that's deeper than you've ever been. Read his word and study it. And what I mean by that is truly study it. Truly study what the Bible is trying to tell you, not just from the words on the paper, but the time period and the culture. What is the magnitude? What is the significance of what's being said or what's going on as you're reading? Because guess what? That's just as important. Not only that, how does that apply to your life right now? If you're not sure, you can research what you read from sources outside of the Bible to get a little bit more context. But of course, guys, make sure the sources are accurate. The first thing that pops up on Google may or may not be the right answer. Then you can also seek wise counsel if you're confused. You can ask myself or one of your leaders. This second half, guys, I truly believe that God is gonna do something so amazing that only he'll be able to get the credit for it. Some of you may say, Pastor Jonathan, I've always felt close to God. I've never once been too busy. I'm doing everything wonderfully into that, I would respond, stop lying. It's okay to admit that we're not always feeling like God is right next to us, and for some, I know that feeling right there may cause them to question their faith even after Christmas. Maybe before Christmas, you started feeling distant, that it seems that God isn't returning your text even though it says red because we all know that God would have an iPhone, right? But either way, you're getting no response. If you're not feeling super close to God in this time, I want you to know that it's okay. You're not alone. This season might just be a dry season for you, but that doesn't mean in a dry season that you just sit and do nothing and wait for the rain. How do I know it's okay? Did you know that Jesus felt this exact same way? We all know that he was doing what he was supposed to do and he still felt away from God, even if it was a short period of time, but how could that be? What proof do I have? Well, the Bible, that's why I love it. Let's check it out. Matthew 27, 46 says this, about three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Think about this. If you don't know the story of Jesus's ministry, let's take a look at the last three years prior, right? The highlight reel, you know, I love MMA, the tale of the tape. How about changing water into wine, which is John 2, 1 through 11, healing the royal official's son, John 4, 46 through 54, healing the paralytic at Bethesda in John 5, 1 through 15, Feeding the 5,000 in John 6, 5 through 14. Jesus walking on water in John 6, 16 through 24. Jesus raised a widow's son, Luke 7, 11 through 17. I believe he knew the sins of the men trying to stone the woman for being caught in adultery. And when he wrote them in the sand, that ultimately saved her life. You can go and check it out on John 8, 1 through 11. How about the miraculous catching of fish? You know, these fishermen that are professionals and know what they're doing and fish all night. And Jesus says, yo, throw the net on the other side. Like they've never thought of that. And then they catch far more than they've ever caught before, like ever? That happened in John 21, 1 through 14. So then let me ask you this question. Would you say that Jesus is connected with God? If all those miracles are happening, the answer has to be yes, right? Is Jesus walking out his purpose? Is he walking out his calling? Let's check scripture, John 3, 17. I feel like everyone knows John 3, 16, but John 3, 17 is just as important. And it says this, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. How is he gonna save the world through himself? The crucifixion. He's gonna be sacrificed on the cross. The answer to that question of, is he walking out his purpose? And is he walking in his purpose? The answer is yes. And guess what? He still, after everything, had a moment where he felt separated from God. But then what happened? 
After the resurrection, which is a miracle, he showed himself to Thomas, another miracle. He was on the earth still for 40 days, another miracle. And then gave them the instructions and what has formed how we do church and our belief in Christ to this day, 2,000 years ago. Another miracle. Why this is relevant is because after a dry season, you can expect the rain, you can expect blessing and wisdom and power and boldness to come out of a dry season if you respond correctly. A dry season won't defeat you and it won't always be dry if you do the things that God is calling you to do even whenever you don't feel Him close. What you need in all seasons is a scheduled time with the Lord. Accountability in doing so, someone you can ask questions that you're going to have, and someone in your life that has the relationship with God that you want. So I challenge you to make a conscious effort to surround yourself with those sort of people. If you do these things, regardless of what season you're in, I truly believe that we're absolutely going to crush it for the kingdom this year. Well, that's all I got, guys, for tonight. Like I said, I'm going to keep it quick. Uh, next week, don't forget to invite a friend and come believing that God is going to do something incredible. I love you guys, and I can't wait to see you at the point. Can't wait for 2023. See you guys then.